Welcome to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, for you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You Show starts now. Hello, my friends. How are we? 99. Can you believe it? 99. That's how many episodes that this show is. How in the heck is that possible? I am. Um, I'm excited. I. I. I am proud. I, and I'm saying that with so, so much humility, um, showing up every week, looking for ideas and frameworks and, and inspirations that, that I can share with you. And, um, I've loved all the conversations that we've had, well, that I've had with my producer and then you, I, I like to envision all of you like right here in my room. Um, when I'm having these, these, these talks with you, I, I've, I've loved how you shared me with your people. Um, I love when people see me at like different events and they're like, Oh my gosh, I, I heard that podcast or I heard you talk about that. Like I, it just warms my heart. Um, I appreciate the DMS. I, I appreciate the email. So thank you. Um, from the bottom of my heart, uh, from the top of my heart and all around my heart, I, um, I just feel so, so blessed. So thank you. Um, can you believe that 2023 is almost over thinking about uh, beliefs? Like, oh my gosh, 99 episodes and 2023 is almost over. I hope that you are enjoying the month and that the season uh, keeps uh, being merry for you. And if you struggle with the holidays and if you struggle with the busyness of the month and of the season, I snag the holiday boundary guide. It's, it's in um, the show notes, but we explore boundaries that work in that guide. Um, we talk about how to establish and how to communicate healthy boundaries with grace and confidence with, with people, like we dive deep into dealing with quote unquote difficult people. I, I share strategies for navigating like kind of the challenging family dynamics that we, that most, if not all of us have and, and give you tips and tricks for maintaining your inner calm, your peace and your joy. So we, we also talk about um, personal and professional goals and how you can keep committed to them during the holiday season. We help you define your enough points. Um, if you've never done the enough point exercise, this alone is worth getting the guide. Um, we talk about your guiding principles that help you align with your values. And I truly believe that if you take the time and you invest the time in yourself, you will set yourself up for a amazing, amazing uh, new year. So you deserve that. I want that for you. Give yourself your, give yourself this gift, you know, of kind of reflection and deciding ahead of time, you know, what, what your boundaries are, what your enough points are, what are going to be the rules, your, your litmus tests, uh, what are they going to be this season and in the upcoming year? Um, I, d I just, I think it's the best gift like I said, that you can give to yourself and to anyone else that you think might benefit from um, establishing these boundaries. Okay, so that's what I want to say first. I am excited about today's topic. And I know I say that every time, 
because every time I am, because I truly try to think about topics that I'm navigating with my own clients, that I'm navigating with myself personally, that I, that I'm seeing in research that I'm, that I, that, that I want to share with you. But today we're digging in into an exploration of what I believe to be three of the most critical elements for transforming and shifting your life. I think these three are often underestimated and yet they have the potential to be game changers for you. And game changers by way of helping you achieve your goals and reach new levels of heights of success and fulfillment. And so when I was thinking about them, I was thinking about how do I want to share them as I do? How do I want to bring them to you? And so I thought what I would do is I would share each of them individually. And then I want to talk to each one and how they specifically impact your life. Now, when I say impact your life, that's a very broad stroke. So I'm like, okay, how do I break it down to even to even be more specific, okay? So in particular, how do these three attributes, I'll call them, how do they impact, affect, shift your health, your wealth, and your relationships? Why those three areas? Because those are the three areas that I find that I coach around the most. That that people, when we when we talk about what people want, when we talk about what people desire, when we talk about um, what people, what what goals they actually really have for their life, they typically are in one of those three areas. They want more health. They want to feel more energetic. They want to feel more alive. They want to feel the day again. Have have this incredible sense of vitality and vibrancy. They also want to create wealth, right? They want to make an impact by way of putting out into the world something of value that then therefore is exchanged for money. And they want relationships. They want to, they want to feel more connected um, with themselves and with other people. They, they have a sense of um, belonging. So I thought that I would share each one of these and then kind of share how they integrate and impact these three areas. So the first attribute is attitude, okay? Your attitude is the lens through which you view and respond to life situations and circumstances, okay? It's about cultivating a positive, abundant, accepting, and resilient mindset that will help and support you navigating the challenges that life brings us with grace and determination. So that's the first one. Ambition is the second one. The way that I'm thinking about ambition for the sake of this conversation is it's your it's your inner drive. It's it's that determination if you will to set and achieve the goals that you have for your life. It's about having a clear sense of purpose and and the motivation to pursue your dreams relentlessly, uh, resiliently, um, and, um, and, and, and prioritizing that in such a way that you, um, implement it. And then the third one is appreciation. Okay. Appreciation obviously is the ability to recognize and to cherish the, the, the beauty and the value and the abundance that is your life. And it involves, you know, gratitude and acknowledging the positives and um, even, even in challenging situations. So these attributes, right, attitude, ambition, appreciation, they serve as powerful keys to unlocking your potential and, and helping support making uh, positive shifts in your life. So when I think about these aspects of life that I want us to focus on, okay, um, that are that most of us, if you will, are wanting to be intentional about, um, as I mentioned, they are usually in one of these three categories, right? Health, 
wealth and relationships. Okay. And so I thought to be most impactful for this conversation, I would share how attitude, ambition, and appreciation line up with these areas of our life. So let's talk about health. Okay. And, and however you want to define health for you, right? Whether that's vitality, aliveness, energy, I think about a few things. First, nutrition, okay? Imagine that you're trying to make healthier dietary choices. Your attitude, how you think about food, can and does greatly impact your success. If you approach nutrition with a mindset of deprivation and restriction, right? Viewing healthy eating as a burden, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle to maintain a, a, I call it, I'll just call it a balanced diet. One, I don't love the word diet and I don't love the word balance, but you know what I mean. Okay. If you view healthier options as a punishment, it will be hard to sustain. If you think in all or nothing, and rely on willpower, you will find yourself confirming that you will never get a handle on your nutritional health. However, if you shift your attitude to one of nourishment and self-care, seeing each nutritious meal as a positive choice that supports your well-being, you are you are way more likely to stick to your nutritional goals. If if you also don't label food as good or bad, Okay, and then subsequently yourself as good or bad and having eaten it, you become a kinder, more loving version of you. And guess what? That kind, loving version of you wants to be kind and loving toward you. Okay, we we take care of things that we love. So if we start loving ourselves, right, we we will better make decisions that support that. So what is your attitude about food? What's your attitude about nutrition? What is your attitude mindset around diet? When you hear that word, what comes to mind? I mean, I know for so many of us, it's it's restriction and meal plans and tracking calories and macros, and it's boring. And, and we use this very sustaining resource of nutrition to shame ourselves, right? My attitude about food is that with any of it, I can have it. That's what's true. And I can also not have it. I don't believe that there is bad food and good food. I mean, I'm not naive to think that there are not foods that are that are more nutritionally dense. And I do try to eat those foods about 80% of the time. And then the other less nutritionally dense foods, like 20%. But I don't stress out about what I eat. I don't get frustrated by what I eat, right? But But I didn't always. I had to learn to choose to have a better relationship, a better attitude as it related to food. Okay. Let's talk about fitness. Another component of health. Obviously your attitude towards exercise will determine your consistency. If you view workouts as a chore, you might find it challenging to stay committed. Same as nutrition. If we use fitness as a way to punish ourselves or go all in or all out, we won't be able to sustain it and we won't benefit from the compounding gains of the consistency. You know, that is key. Friends, like money that compounds over time, our attitude and our ability to sustain even bare minimums have massive impact on not just not just our nutrition, but our levels of fitness. My my attitude about fitness has sustained has sustained me for over three decades. I see fitness as an opportunity to boost my energy, to improve my mood, to enhance my overall health and to keep up with my kids. So same with nutrition. What is your attitude? What is your attitude about fitness? It's really important for you to know. I don't need to know, but you need to know. Um, Let's talk about sleep, another component of health. Your attitude towards sleep, I believe, plays a role in not just sleep quality, but in your ability to get peaceful, restful sleep. If you are someone that constantly worries about not getting enough sleep and you dwell on past sleepless nights, your anxiety about sleep will most certainly contribute to to levels of not sleeping 
even insomnia. So shifting your attitude to one of relaxation and one of trust in your body's ability to rest can and does, not because I say so, but because the research says so, improves your sleep. And even if I don't sleep well, or even if I didn't get as much sleep as I might like, my attitude about sleep is either one of these two. Either there's always tonight, there's always tonight. I can always get some better sleep tonight. Or I can do a little bit of tired today. Nobody does tired like me. I generally have a really abundant, positive attitude about attributes as it relates to my health. What are yours? Okay, let's talk about attitude and how it affects our wealth. <laughs> to simplify, I want to break down wealth into saving, spending, and making. Okay, so when it comes to saving money, your attitude towards financial security matters. If you view saving as a burden, right, or if you feel deprivation, kind of similarly to nutrition, when you cut back on expenses, it's going to be challenging to build your savings. But if you cultivate an attitude of financial responsibility and see saving as a means to achieve your long-term goals, leaving legacy wealth, hooking yourself up for your future, you're going to be you're going to be more motivated to set money aside, right? Because you're not going to go for the instant gratification of the now win. Similarly to nutrition, similarly to your fitness goals, right? Spending. Your attitude towards spending affects clearly your financial decisions. If you view spending as a way to fill emotional voids or to seek immediate gratification, you're most likely going to accumulate debt. Because there's no amount of spending that is going to fill the void emotionally for you. And so if that is what you're using, instead of just processing and experiencing negative emotion, you will accumulate massive amounts of debt. So I've seen this happen in, in myself and I've seen this happen in clients, okay? Shifting your attitude to one of mindful spending prioritizing needs over wants, valuing long-term financial stability, right? Um, feeling your feelings instead of escaping them by way of spending, okay? These are all critical as it relates to uh, building and establishing um, healthier financial habits. Let's talk about making money, Okay. Your attitude, your relationship, right, with money is one of the primary factors in whether or not you will feel fulfilled and successful as it relates to your ability to earn, your ability to make money. If you were raised thinking that you had to work hard for money or that you had to borrow, beg, and steal for every penny or that money was hard or that money is bad or that people with a lot of money are bad, uh, or that money doesn't grow on trees, or that it's traded for time, right? I've heard so many of these, right? You will never enjoy your full earning potential. As long as you think in ill regards towards money, i.e. having a bad attitude towards money, you will never win the money game. You won't. Because you will always be trading time for money and you will be res resistant and you will self-sabotage your ability to put forth, put out the value that's exchanged for money because you have scarcity around it. Any sort of negative attitude is just another way of saying scarcity. Scarcity in making money, scarcity in saving money, scarcity in saving money, scarcity as it relates to your fitness, as it relates to your nutrition, as it relates to your sleep. Whenever you have a scarcity attitude, you will have scarcity results, okay? Let's talk, and lastly, about relationships, okay? Relationships, um, your attitude in the realm of relationships towards others and yourself profoundly shapes your interactions. If And you all know this, you have felt this. If you harbor negative judgment and assumptions about people, 
You, you will struggle to build trust and connections. You can't hold love for others to the extent you want and judgment for others at the same time. Our emotions are not compartmentalized. It's not like our love for people reside on the right side, right? Of the limbic brain and of the heart and hate on the left. So to that extent, right? That you can shift into an attitude of empathy and openness and compassion and love. It can lead to a more um, harmonious and, and, and meaningful relationships. Okay. So I know I talked a lot about attitude. I'm going to go, I'm going to go faster through these next attributes. Okay. Ambition. How does ambition affect your health? How does ambition affect your nutrition, your fitness and your sleep? Okay. Ambition in health, okay, translates into setting and pursuing specific wellness goals, whether it's achieving a target weight, running a marathon, improving your sleep hygiene. Ambitious individuals are more likely to push their physical limits. They're more likely to explore new fitness routines. They're more likely to have and to make consistent efforts to optimize their well being. They commit to it with a, a kind of no matter what intention, because it's integrated into who it is that they are. It's integrated into their identity. So would you consider yourself ambitious? So ask yourself these questions, okay? My guess is, if, if you're listening to, to, to this, you are ambitious, okay? So the next question is, where in your life are you the most ambitious? I know, I know for me, if you would have asked me 15 years ago, I would have told you that I'm the most ambitious as it relates to my physical health. Marathons, ultras, 100K races, triathlons. I had my own gym. And what's super awesome is no matter what, right? You can take the same level of ambition, whether that be with your health, your wealth, your relationships, your business, whatever it is, you can take that same level of ambition and apply it to other areas of life. That's, that's what I did with my, with my physical health. Like, wait, I can take that same ambitious spirit and apply it into my wealth and apply it into my relationships, apply it into my business. Okay. Let's talk about wealth. Remember saving, spending, making ambition and wealth involve setting ambitious financial goals, like wild, impossible goals, whether that's saving for retirement or starting a business or achieving financial independence, ambitious savers prioritize long-term financial security over short-term indulgences and, and, and diligently work towards their objective. Ambitious makers have a passion for the work that they put into the world. They serve generously and they put massive amounts of value into the world. So what's your ambition with your wealth? Right. For a lot of us, it ties directly into our attitude about wealth. If we think that money is bad and people that have it are selfish and mean, right, we will most likely not be as ambitious in our attempts to accumulate money. OK, let's talk quickly, quickly, quickly about relationships. Ambition in relationships means aspiring to be the very best version of yourself and continuously improving your communication and your connection with others. Ambitious individuals seek, they seek personal growth. They aim to contribute positively to their relationships, whether it's with a partner or a family member or a friend. So here, what is your ambition with regards to putting forth your best? Is it something that you think about? Do, do you prepare for it? Do you plan for it? Do, do you have a certain level of intentionality around it? Okay. And, and my last question with regards to that is how would your relationships be different? if you were just a little bit more ambitious in your approach with them, okay? And finally, appreciation. I'm gonna go super, super fast with this because my producer's like, your time is almost over. But I, I really wanted to talk about all these three A's and I would feel terrible if I didn't like really quickly talk about appreciation, okay? Think about gratitude, okay? Appreciation in health involves acknowledging and savoring the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. It's it's being grateful and blessed for just being alive, for having this breath, waking up today, right? Is reason enough to give thanks. And yet we can also appreciate the energy and the vitality that comes from nutritious eating and the sense of accomplishment after a challenging workout and the, reju the rejuvenation of a good night's sleep. 
Like most of you know that every day I write down five things that I'm grateful for, that I appreciate it. And most days within that five is something as it relates to my health. Maybe it's that I'm thankful for my body or my immunity or my breathing practices or my endurance or my strength or my sleep or my flexibility or my mind or my heart, right? My ability to walk, to hug, to clap my hands, to dance. Our bodies, our health is truly something of magic. Like what's not magical about it? Wealth, appreciation and wealth means recognizing the the value of financial stability and, and responsible money management. It's appreciating watching your saving account go up and up and up and up and appreciating the security and freedom that, that, that comes from having it and the wisdom of making mindful choices, um, choices as it relates to spending that align with your financial goals and actually truly appreciating the purchase. And I think it's in a, in appreciating your and your the purchases and the gifts, okay, the very the very um, the very things that you purchase, can we appreciate and the gifts that you put out into the world, okay, the value that you put out in the world, um, can, can we be deliberate in in our thanks for it, and relationships? This is key, friends. Appreciation in relationship entails recognizing the qualities and contributions of others. It involves expressing gratitude for the positive aspects of your relationships and, and valuing the unique strengths and perspectives that each person brings. Okay, appreciating yourself also plays a crucial role in, in um, building these healthy relationships. So how often, how frequently is it, are you doing it on the daily? Are you extending appreciation by way of a text or a voice record or an email or picking up the phone to call those people that you love, that you serve, that you manage, that you lead, and just letting them know that you're thinking about them. That's all, that's all it takes. So friends, attitude, ambition, and appreciation are super powerful attributes that influence how you appreciate every aspect of your life. I highlighted the biggies on the show today, health, wealth, and relationships. But you can apply these attributes to every single area of your life. And I truly believe that by cultivating a positive attitude, by setting ambitious goals, and by practicing appreciation, you you you, you can unlock your potential and create more fulfilling and and, and balanced um, experiences in all of the areas of your life because you deserve it. Have an amazing one, everybody. Um, and I will see you next week for episode 100. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.LeahRowling.com.